すいません昨日会ったばかりなのにこんなお願いをしてしまって How's it going everyone? My name is Michael SK and welcome back to Chaos Head Noah to be precise Um, so this interesting character here, who was following us around, seems to be interested in the otaku lifestyle. And I don't know why. I don't know what her motive is. I, I, I don't know what her, what her goal is here. This is very strange and just not, it's not normal. It's far from. I really don't know what to think about this character, so I'm interested to see where things are going to go in this episode.、Uh, before we actually jump into this, though, I just want to state that、um, I did a monitor upgrade. I'm officially、uh, for reals now on 1440p.、Uh, this is a huge upgrade for me because I, I have never, ever touched these numbers before. They were too scary for me. I decided to treat myself to the upgrade. Um, yeah, not a lot of visual novels support that, so this is technically still 1080p that I upscale、uh, for, for YouTube purposes, but、um, hopefully everything looks okay because everything doesn't look okay for me.、And、when it comes to 1440p with this game, it's just full screening the 1080p, and it's,、uh, it's not pretty. It's really not. But it is what it is. I think the recording should look okay. If it doesn't, now you know why, and I'll make adjustments. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, this is awkward. What a start. I was really nervous. Oh,、uh, to be specific, they're going to go and, like, reserve a figure or something. Me leaving school with a girl. Like a. Like a. Riaju? Like a popular kid. I thought this was a world I'd never have anything to do with. All right, what's that? Otaku slang for someone whose real life Ria is fulfilling jujitsu and fun. Ria Ju will have a girlfriend, lots of friends, and perhaps be on a sports team. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves here, you know? I, I, don't, I don't think we're quite at that level. I never thought it would happen to me. But right now, there, seems, or there seemed to be an intense aura radiating from her. We were just walking side by side. Why did I feel so nervous? I still didn't know who she was or what she wanted. What she,、uh, or what, what would she want with a creepy otaku like me? I'm glad we're thinking realistically here. Hi?、Uh, yeah. She started talking out of nowhere, so I got surprised and said something weird sounding. Yeah, you definitely did. She seemed to be nervous, too. Her expression was tense. She was older than me, but actually quite innocent. It was pretty moe. Not that I could do much more than glance at her every so often. I was too embarrassed to look her in the eye. でもどうしてすすむくんはセイラちゃんが危ないって分かったのかなってああれはえっと先週の回に伏線があったんだセイラの携帯が鳴ってるシーンが一瞬だけ挿入されてて着信表示ですすむの名前が出てるあああそういえばそんなシーンありましたね山田くんはそういう細かい伏線をあちこちに貼るのが好きなんだキンゴルでも似たようなことをやってた山田くんキンゴルいや山田くんっていうのはブラチューの監督の愛称だよで山田くんがブラチューの前に監督やってたアニメがキンゴルへえじゃあ山田くんさんって有名な監督さんなんですねまあ僕は好きな方かななんでかっていうと I guess they just kind of trailed on into their own conversations and such. I started lecturing her on anime, and the next thing I knew, we were at Anna. Is it. Ah,、oh, fuck. I can't remember how to pronounce this. I don't even know how to properly pronounce this. Is it animeite? Or eight? You can technically spell eight out of that. Animate? You know what? I like how that sounds. Let's go with animate.、Uh, we got in here much faster than I expected. I'd gotten really excited and talked too much again. 
Yua was a great listener. Whenever I showed off some random piece of knowledge, she'd act really interested. I knew this whole thing was a trap, but I kept talking anyway. I'm so bad at speaking, and this had never happened before. I felt like chatting online. It was kind of weird. <laughs> it's like she was reading our mind. <laughs> she went up to the clerk with an expression of intense nervousness on her face and ordered the Sarah Post Awakening version figure. All I did was stand back and watch. I kept looking for a chance to run away, but she kept shooting nervous glances at me, and I couldn't move. Afterward, at her request, I showed her around the store. She was happy to find all kinds of things she might want to buy, but I didn't have the energy left to smile back at her. <coughs> Excuse me, God, I don't have the fucking power to speak. Alright, well, let's pretend that didn't happen. Yua came to school by train, so I was forced to go with her to Shinsen Station. She might look like an airhead, but she wasn't. Whenever she wanted something, she knew just how to make me give it to her. Black. She was a black character. Alright, let's not get the wrong idea there. Uh, 2000s era net slang for a person with a black-hearted personality. Ah. Specifically someone who is friendly and kind on the surface, but in their heart harbors malice towards others. Certain people, mostly otaku, find this gap between surface personality and inner thoughts to be very moe. Of course. By the end of this fucking playthrough, I'm going to understand Moe better than I ever have before. She suddenly asked me that, uh, just as we got to the station. A phone, huh? I shook my head, slightly sad. Contact me for what? Are you going to keep bugging me instead of leaving me alone?私も持ってるからメールアドレスを交換しませんかどどうしてえそのフィギュアの発売日に取りに行かなくちゃいけませんよねその時にまた一緒にまだ一人でアニメエイトに行く勇気はないから you know what? I just heard her say the name of that place, and I think, uh, I think it is Animate. <laughs> clever. <laughs> she was a clever one. <laughs> I knew it, but I couldn't say no. If I did, I'd be the bad guy here. <laughs> 3D girls were truly terrifying. <laughs> This is just, no, the, something's not right, alright? Like, my chaos child knowledge, my antisocial knowledge, my knowledge of otakus, which is quite limited and obviously only on fictional shit, but to everything I know, there is no way in hell that any sort of character would come up to you with similar interests and want to, you know, spend time and, and get to know you better. There's no way. You live the otaku lifestyle, you're alone forever. That's just how it is. I'm joking, by the way, I'm an asshole. Was it just that I wasn't used to talking to people? Or was she just a master persuader? I felt like she wasn't going to go home until I gave her my email address. And yet, she seemed nervous as she looked up at me from behind her glasses. For some reason, I felt my will to resist draining away. My skin felt clammy, and a cold chill was running down my spine. But I couldn't run away or say no. There was something strange about Yua. Something that wasn't normal. I couldn't explain what exactly. Uh, wasn't normal about her, but she definitely wasn't normal. Well, neither am I. As I sit here playing visual novels for YouTube. The next thing I knew, I'd written my email address on a scrap of notebook paper and handed it to her. She looked happy as she took it, then bowed and disappeared into the station. I stood there for a solid 10 minutes with a blank look on my face, like my soul had drained out of my body. Yeah, that tends to happen. That's why I don't give out my number. Then my, uh, my soul will just drain out of my body. I don't want that to happen, personally. What would you think about a girl like that? I don't know what to do. 
I mean, it feels like she's up to something. She has to be. Hey, are you listening to... Uh, yeah, are you listening? Grim. What's the name of this H game? It's not an H game, buddy. It's reality. The, the biggest H game of them all. That night I asked Grim about Yua. It felt like I wasn't getting anywhere on my own. But that was the answer I got. And to be fair, this was the same reaction I had the first time I talked to her. I was an idiot to ask you in the first place. Wait, you're serious. Man, you're such a lucky bastard. I didn't know I didn't think you had it in you. I thought you said you weren't even into 3D girls. It's not like that. Grim was reacting just like Misumi. Maybe the two of them were actually the same person. Well, guys like you, Nightheart, who've never dated a girl in your life, uh, often quit being otaku the minute you get a girlfriend. Your girlfriend's not going to like those 10-minute monologues about school swimsuits. I mean, really. What's wrong with monologues about school swimsuits? What the fuck is this shit? What the hell is that? Okay, we're not going to have a girlfriend if we keep that as our fucking notification for when we get an email. This guy's a goner. Somebody needs to do something about him. Huh? I just heard Saraton's voice. I'd set that voice to play whenever I got an email. I looked over at my inbox and the sender's name was... Yua Kusunogi. I got an email. Just now. Hooray! An email from a 3D girl... I'd never gotten one before. I gulped and opened it. Oh, all right. Here we go. This is Yua Kusunogi. Kusunoki, sorry. Uh, sorry for sending you an email out of the blue like this. It would make me very happy if you saved my email address in your contacts list. Sorry uh, for bringing you along with me today, but it made me very happy. Maybe because I had never been to a store like that before, or... I think it was because I was with you, maybe. <laughs> and you put an LOL. What time are you coming to school tomorrow? Oh, the reason I'm asking is I want to say hello in the morning, kind of. And I can't see the rest of that. Oh, uh, there we go. I hope we run into each other tomorrow, even if it's just by chance. Bye, I'll send you another email later. Good night. I mean, shit. Come on. Come on. You can censor elegance and femi uh, femininity coming off the page, but the emojis also made her feel friendly and approachable. And that's why I use them. You have to use uh, LOL sparingly, just to make sure that you continue the mood in a very lighthearted manner. You gotta make sure you use the uh, Apple or, or just regular emojis and everything. Don't use this weird text shit that's like two decades, out, uh, two decades old. We use the emojis that are on our phones, no matter what. If you are texting on a computer for some weird ass reason, Find some fucking emojis and use those even more sparingly because you don't want to, like, overdo it. Uh, unless, like, you're talking about something funny, you got to throw those out there. But when it's getting flirtatious, you got to be right to use uh, the, the correct ones. I, I, I don't know how to explain it other than that, but just make sure you use emojis in the right way or else your ass is grass. And then people are just not interested you in, in you anymore. It's, it's just how it is. That's reality. Why the fuck did I just start talking about that? But it was because I was with you, Nishi Joe, and I want to say hello in the morning. It felt like she might be plotting something. Show me what it said. That's totally normal. Basically just a hello. Shut up and upload it. Upload. Did we upload? I, I have no idea if we uploaded. I, I guess we did. Oh, yep, we just... Uh, yep, there we go. We're just copying and pasting all the lines. One by one. Wouldn't it have been easier to, like, screenshot it, upload it to Imgur or something like that? Come on, Imgur was around back then. What is this, 2008, 2009? And Grim was being obnoxious, so I decided to type in the whole message for him. Of course, I didn't type in our personal information. Hmm, hmm, what is this? It feels like she's head over heels for you. Die in a fire, Nightheart. Help me out here, man. 
It's some kind of trap. Right, right, it's all a big conspiracy. You're overthinking things, aren't you? It sure looks like she's into you. You're almost at the good ending. I mean, this is impossible. Yeah, we're only in chapter one. I'm a creepy otaku. Self-awareness is the first step to enlightenment. Why would a cute girl from the real world want to date me? LOL, dude, you're just bragging now. Help me out here. Calm down, you're just overthinking things. She and you have a lot in common, right? There aren't many nice girls like that left. And I knew that, but she was too nice. It was creepy. I don't think you're one to talk, buddy. I mean, the stalker stuff at the the stalker stuff at the start was a little much, but that's just how it, that just goes to show you how much she likes you, right? She's an anime fan, right? She's like the ideal girlfriend for Onotaku, anyway. Get her to go along with all your weird ass fantasies. That actually sounded pretty appealing. No, 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 no. That was just what she wanted me to think. She came onto you. Be grateful. I'm not into 3D girls. Yeah, right. You want to date her really badly, right? This is your chance to stop being an otaku. You'll never get a chance like it. I'm sure of it. I mean, you can still be one. It's just maybe not as much as one. This is your chance. Stop being a wimp and go for it. Be like Nightheart, but in the real world. Go for it. If only I could, life would be so much easier. Talking to her today and the day before taught me that. It could be fun and make me happy, but it was also exhausting and a pain in the butt. If it was that hard, I'd be better off living a peaceful, relaxing life with 3D girls. So I decided not to answer you as email. Damn, that's fucked up. What's, uh, what's going on here? The fire was burning. Long tongues of flames danced within the incinerator... Inside it, a sailor uniform and several textbooks were being burnt to ash. A house in the foothills overlooking the Seto Inland Sea. In the distance, you could hear the whistles of the ships. A salt breeze gently shook the trees around the house. Despite her idyllic uh, surroundings, the small girl in front of the incinerator, Kozoe Orihara, was in a miserable state. Her eyes reflected the red light of the fire as she watched the sailor uniform and textbooks burn to ash in the incinerator. Until yesterday, that had been her uniform, but er, and those had been her textbooks. She was the one who had put them in the incinerator, but she must have still felt some attachment to them because she kept staring at them. Suddenly, she winced in pain and put her hands tightly over her ears. She opened her mouth, but that was all she could do. She couldn't moan or cry. All she could do was gasp for breath. She kept shaking her head as if begging for something to stop. Then she collapsed, falling onto the ground. She looked up, exhausted, at the sky. She stayed there unmoving for several minutes. And then suddenly she turned around. She was staring at the house's veranda. The house was made of wood and over 50 years old. Even though it was still daytime, much of the veranda was shrouded in deep shadow, leaving it in darkness. She slowly staggered up and walked toward it. Just then, her mother appeared, as if she'd been waiting. <laughs> Kazoe nodded and sat on the veranda. <laughs> Her mother stood behind her and looked at the peaceful Seto Sea. <sighs> Kazoe didn't reply to her mother's kind words. She didn't shake her head or nod. She just stared sadly at the incinerator in the corner of the yard and the flames that still rose from it. I once had an incinerator in Minecraft. It was a week after, on a school day. As usual, I headed to school in a gloomy mood, staring down at my feet as I went. I don't know what that whole scene was about. I guess it's a character that we're yet to meet, just like that, uh, one white-haired girl. Fall was clearly at hand. The trees in Shoto Park were changing colors, 
and I was starting to feel cold in my short sleeve shirt. Since I spent almost all my time in my room, it always felt strange when the seasons changed like this. It still felt like summer to me. I had spent the whole weekend playing ESO, and Grim kept asking about Yua, but I just ignored him. Yua hadn't sent me any more messages. Maybe she'd given up when I hadn't replied. I certainly hope so. Whenever I talked to her, I always felt myself wavering. I started to feel... hope. But there was no point in a creepy otaku like me having hope. I had lived my whole life without ever having hope fulfilled. And that's why I'd lost interest in 3D girls. Yeah, fuck happiness. Please don't make me hope. Please don't have any hopes for me. Suddenly, someone patted me on the shoulder from behind. I turned around expecting to see Nanami or Misumi, but was surprised. Hello. Hello. Her cheeks were a little flushed and she was smiling at me. For some reason, she was out of breath. <laughs> Hadn't she given up? Did she still have hopes for me? おはようございます。西条くん。あ、やっと言えました。土日を含めて4日もかかってしまいましたけど。あ、先週メールを送ったんですけど。By the time I realized I'd nodded, it was too late. What did she want me to do? Was I supposed to fall in love with her? Be her boyfriend? And then we were supposed to be a, a happy, loving couple? Impossible. That kind of thing was for other people, not me. I wanted to do it, but there was no way I could. I still didn't understand why Yua liked me anyway. I couldn't trust her. So it was just... impossible. I started walking fast to leave her behind, but she jogged to catch up with me. ニシジョ君のクラスに行ったんですけど、いませんでしたよね。もしかして風邪でも引いて休んでるんじゃないかと思って心配だったんです。でも元気そうでよかった。たたまにしか。はい。僕たまにしか学校来ない。みみんなから
Suddenly, I realized that there were barely any students left around us. They'd all gone inside the school building. Oh, when are we not? She spoke softly, her cheeks turning a little red. She bowed politely and headed off to the third year wing. As I watched her go, I pinched my cheek. Just as I thought, this wasn't a dream or a delusion. I don't know what to think about all this shit. I spent the whole day's worth of classes in a daze. I don't think I heard a single thing the teacher said. I just rested my chin on my hand and stared out at the autumn sky. And, you know, it helps that we're, you know, right where all main characters deserve to be in anime and visual novels. Neither my classmates nor the teachers paid the slightest bit of attention to me. But Yua paid attention to me. She wasn't like the rest of those assholes. I sat there the whole day thinking about her and indulging in one delusion after another. And before I knew it, school was over. Yo, Taku. Kyomo de toka. Kono mai no megane no koto wa. Umaku i tirundaro na. Oi, oi. Nito da karate chucho stem na. Muko ga omai no koto kini te kreten na. Skiau ka skia na ikawa tomokaku. Yatsimau no ga legi. So, so na koto shi nai yo. Oi. なんだよいきなり大声出してイワトはそんなことしないはお前また言ってんのなんで最初から諦めるんだよそろそろ引きこもりから卒業しようぜ僕は引き,引きこもりじゃない That's not what I meant anyway Misumi only cared about sleeping with girls he wouldn't understand I ran past a confused looking Misumi and quickly left the classroom. Ah, guy talk. Sometimes us guys will never understand. The fastest way to get to the courtyard from the second year classrooms was to go across the connecting corridor to the third year students building, and then head down the stairs, at least as far as I knew. I didn't come to school that often, so I didn't know what led where. I didn't even know where some places like most of the special classrooms were. So I was a little nervous when I went down the connecting corridor. Oh shit, who the fuck is this? And why do I really not want to be around her? She she is radiating too much angst. I'm not ready for it. There was a girl standing in the middle of the corridor staring up at the sky. She had a very stern expression on her face. She didn't seem lost in thought or anything like that. She was clearly in a place that would block traffic, but wasn't moving at all. Come on, I know you hear my footsteps getting closer. Get out of the way, I'm in a hurry. For some reason, she felt like a... Ah, oh, shit. Uh, what is that again? A dokun or, or whatever it is? I needed to... Basically a delinquent. I needed to make sure not to get closer or let her notice me. Just as I tried to walk past this girl who I decided to call Girl B... Oi. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Crap, she talked to me. Was she going to mug me? We're in a public space. She's not going to do that. Well, maybe not. Or was she going to say that she didn't like my face and then take me to her group of Dokyun friends so they could beat me up? Please, no. What did I ever do to you? I glanced over at her to find that she was glaring at me. I wasn't sure how to answer that. I was Takumi Nishijo, obviously, but I'd never met this girl, so there was no way she would know that. She must be planning to do something really terrible to me. I bowed quickly, being careful not to look at her, and then ran away at top speed. And I'm sure she's gonna follow us. I ran down the staircase in the third year wing, and out the doors, and then glanced behind me. The scary girl didn't seem to have followed me. Oh, good god. Whew, the 3D world was an awful place. 
There were traps everywhere. I took a few deep breaths and then looked around the courtyard. The courtyard was between the pool and the school building, and it was really more of a corridor than a yard. There were flower beds placed at, er, at regular intervals where purple flowers bloomed. What were those, what were those flowers called? I didn't know. Uh-oh. I saw Yua standing in front of one of the flower beds, staring down at it while she waited. She was really here. She was really waiting for me. Not for anybody else. Just for me. Yua wasn't going to betray me. Maybe I could believe in her after all. Maybe she could save me. Uh. Yua looked up and noticed me. And then her eyes went wide in surprise. I stood there looking away in embarrassment... I didn't know if it was okay to walk up to her or not. Why was she surprised? Did I mess up by coming? As I tried to figure out what to do, she ran up to me. I was surprised. She might, have, she might have the same kind of mentality I did, the kind that was pessimistic about everything. But there was one big difference between Yua and me. I was pessimistic and didn't do anything. Yua was pessimistic but took action. That was something I really respected about her. I wanted to be that way too, I thought. <laughs> Well, wasn't that, like, why we're here? Like, 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 that was practically implied and agreed on already. I nodded in response to her question. She and I headed for the school gate together. I felt kind of embarrassed. As we walked home, it felt like the other students were shooting me jealous glances. <clears throat> Excuse me. The more I stared... Or the more I started to notice people staring, the more I started to freeze up. I should have known that there was no way I could walk home with a girl. <laughs> Who the fuck is that? He looks so basic. Who the f- What the fuck? Was that a teacher? I passed by a teacher I didn't recognize. Actually, the only reason I thought they were a teacher was that they were wearing a suit. But did we have any teachers that young? I rarely came to school, so of course, I didn't know who our teachers were, or what they looked like. Sometimes I even forgot my homeroom teacher's face. The teacher in the suit looked around, seemingly lost, before heading toward the school building. What uh. Ah, excuse me. Just trying to get a drink here. I quickly shook my head and started walking alongside her again. The base was 10 minutes away from school, which was a bit further than the train station at Shinsen uh, Yua used to go home. Uh, so I guess I was walking her home instead of the other way around. Out of sheer habit, I walked us through Shoto Park, cutting through it diagonally, shaved a minute or so off the commute. How did she know? やっぱりよく見かけたんです。でも、いる時といない時があって。今日、ようやくその謎が解けました。学校にたまにしか来ないからだったんですね。あ、別にそれがダメって言ってるわけじゃなくてですね。素朴な疑問だったので。うん。You <笑> were suddenly stopped and looked over at the bench where I always ate breakfast. Right now, it was empty. She suddenly leaned forward just a little and ran her fingers across the back of the bench. The bench was right in front of the fence surrounding the lake. Since I always sat facing the lake, I didn't need to worry about anyone gazing at me. There was also a small water mill right next to it, which was another reason I liked it. It served to partially hide me. 
姿を見かけなかった日は、心配でご飯も喉を通らなかったりしてたんです。Really? I hadn't noticed her watching me at all. バカみたいですよね。一度も話したこともない人の心配してるなんて。でも、話しかける勇気もなかったので。So that was why she was acting like a stalker at first. She wasn't a stalker, she was just really worried about me, maybe. I didn't really have a reason to say no. I nodded, still looking out at the lake. She put her bag on the bench and then quietly sat down. Then she sat upright with good posture, looking at the lake. It was so quiet, so peaceful, and she was right there with me. The soft wind made ripples on the water and gently rustled through her hair. Was this what it was like to have a normal life? It was just a normal day, a normal situation, so why did it feel like I was about to cry? <laughs> I watched her from the side as she quickly spoke, or quietly spoke. If we were in an age game, this would be, or this would totally be, when I asked her to be my girlfriend. She'd say yes, we'd kiss, and that would be the good ending. Depending on the route, maybe we'd even engage in some naughty outdoor fun. She tilted her head to look up at me. Unable to speak, I turned my gaze toward her bag. As I stared at the three Garo froggy straps on it, I cursed myself for being too lame to talk to a girl. Uh oh, delusion time. I don't know, a part of me really wants it to be like a good delusion because, you know, he deserves good things. This is like a nice, happy situation. I know that one time I did kind of, you know, fuck with him a little bit, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, let's, let's do another good delusion. Wait a second. Did I just see something? What was I looking at? Gero Froggy, a character popular with high school girls. I had seen it somewhere before. Where? Oh, we know. Come on. We have to use our big brain. Oh, right. Nanami had the same strap on her phone. That was all. That's right. What was I thinking? Why did I feel so scared all of a sudden? I was just being a dork. Wait, this isn't a delusion. Oh, you know what? I think, um, I don't know if it was somebody from the comments or Codex, uh, one of my, my fantastic viewers and patrons, uh, he was giving me some tips, and I think this was one of them, where sometimes, um, the, the choices, they're actually not for a delusion, and actually for an action. And I think in this case, it was to remember where we've seen this shit before. Nanami said that the Gero Froggy was really popular with teenage girls. It wouldn't be unusual at all for Yua to have some of, some of that stuff. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Really, having a vivid imagination could be a handicap sometimes. It got exhausting being afraid of your own delusions. She looked up at me, tilting her head. I quickly forced myself to smile back. Uh Huh? What kind of reaction is that? Why do you look so tense? Did I say something wrong? All I did was talk about Gero Froggy, so why? <laughs> The smile disappeared from her face and she turned her head down so I couldn't see what her expression was like anymore. The bad feeling hadn't gone away. The deja vu I'd felt since I'd seen the three Gero Froggies on her bag. Had I really seen them before? I had seen three Gero Froggies somewhere before and Yua was afraid that I'd remember where. Yeah, she was at the, um, at the cafe with us, the neck cafe. A sense of distrust welled up within me and began to take control of my heart. Should I trust her or not?
Her voice was trembling. Her words were sounding more and more unnatural as she talked. Wait, she has friends? She wasn't looking at me, she wasn't looking at me and smiling. A moment ago, she'd been so peaceful, so kind. I felt so hollow and empty. Please don't say another word, I whispered in my heart. She reached out toward her bag and tried to take the straps off. Her hand was shaking a little. Maybe she was nervous because she couldn't get them off. Why is... Oh, well, that fucking sucks. She finally yanked one off by force, knocking the bag off the bench. It hadn't been zipped up, so her notebooks and textbooks went spilling everywhere. Just a few minutes ago, I would have thought the whole scene was very moe, but now all I could do was stare in shock because... By chance, one of the notebooks that fell to the ground had fallen open, and the small memos and newspaper clippings in it had scattered everywhere. New gen? It must have been some kind of scrapbook because all the clippings and memos had to do with one subject. I could see it clearly. New gen. Yeah, there it is. My voice was hoarse. She was hurriedly trying to pick up the clippings and notes and stuff them back into her bag. <laughs> She stood up, holding it tightly to her chest. Her smile was gone, replaced with an awkward expression. <laughs> she didn't answer me. Why won't you answer me? Come on, say something. If you don't answer, I'll think you're hiding something. And just when I was about to believe you, just when I thought you were going to be on my side, just when I was starting to believe that... Yes, believe her, who doesn't even fucking exist. Sarah was right all along. All 3D girls were garbage. Even Yua didn't like me, she was just trying to get close to me for some reason of her own. Maybe she was going to turn me over to the police. Maybe she was going to threaten me. This was awful, just awful. Just when I was so close to forgetting all about that murder. The cops had never come to say anything. I'd convinced myself that I'd never have to deal with it again. I didn't want to get involved. What was Yua after? I turned around so I could run. But... Yua grabbed my wrist from behind. Her voice made me shudder. Yeah, now she's got a completely different tone of voice here. It was so cold I thought I might freeze. She didn't seem anything like the girl I'd been talking to a moment ago. And... She was gripping my wrist with incredible strength. She was holding it so tightly that it was physically painful. I thought for a moment that she might crush my bones. It hurt so bad. I tried to shake her off, but she wouldn't let go. Instead, she pulled me closer, and I almost fell backwards. Uh-oh. She whispered in an emotionless tone, or voice, same shit, right behind me and right into my ear. I shivered and slowly turned around. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit of a different gaze. The color in her eyes was insane. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hiding something? There was only one thing I could think of. Somehow, for some reason, she knew that I'd witnessed the crucified corpse and the killer. That's why she'd approached me. She really was a clever one. Everything she'd ever said to me was a lie. That she'd gotten curious about me when she saw me for the first time. That she liked Blood Tune. That she wanted to go buy the Sarah Post Awakening version figure on the day it came out with me. When she'd smiled at something I'd said. When she'd said that she wanted to get to know me better. When she said that she was worried that I didn't come to school 
Even when she said I'd impressed her by coming to school, it was all lies. I clenched my fists in rage and anger. Damn it, damn it, damn it! Why was I ever willing to believe her? Alright, yes, well fucking listen, god damn. <laughs> if I won't listen, then what? She was like a totally different person now. That peaceful, easygoing manner she'd had was completely gone. Now she looked cold and unapproachable with a terrible intensity about her. Her words were cold as ice, as cold as death itself. The signs of weakness and helplessness she normally showed were nowhere to be found. I didn't want to hear those words. I tried to close my ears, but I couldn't. She still had my wrist in her grasp. She wasn't gripping it as tightly as before, but she still wouldn't let go. I couldn't move my hand. With her free hand, she reached into her bag and took out something metallic and showed it to me. Uh, <laughs> fuck. No, that's right. We had the fucking thing in our room. God damn it. I gasped in shock. My heart felt like it was about to leap out of my chest. My mind began to race. I had my free hand over my ear, but I let it drop and I heard her voice sounding slightly disappointed. Of course I did. I knew exactly what it was. It looked like a cross, but it was actually a stake. Not many stakes had such an elaborate design. At least I'd only seen some once before. Good times. That night scattered on the road. That night pounded by the demon woman into the wall. That night pinning the corpse to the wall. How many fucking sentences do you need to say that to just get the point across? Yes. Yes, bitch. Stop. I shook my head desperately. An awful sweat was forming on my brow. All I could do was try to wipe it off as I shook my head no. When... When did she search my room? The day we first met? When I hurt my leg and she walked me home? When she was staring with shining eyes and a cute face at the Sarah figure? Yes, it's the same. Stop. Why does she have to do 10 sentences that use the same fucking word? I was sure of it. This girl thought I was behind the new gen killings. She thought I was the murderer. Was she trying to be some kind of detective? Yua Kusunoki, teen detective. You know what I thought? Die, bitch. And I meant it too. They weren't just empty words. I mean, this stuff might have worked in an anime or a video game. But I knew that her theory had a fatal flaw. I'd seen the killer. I'd seen her with my own eyes, that demon. The girl whose name I didn't know. Who wore a Suume uniform. She was close. <laughs> She looked down and sighed softly, her grip relaxed, and at last I was freed. What did she mean by yet? No, I can't even see my fucking past sometimes. It makes things really difficult. What does that mean? The ability to see the future before it ha- Okay, wait, so it's quite literally, okay. Huh? 
My jaw dropped. See the future? What the hell was she talking about? What did that have to do with the murder? I stood there confused as Yua reached into her bag and pulled out several full color printouts. Wait. How did she get the images though? The Guro photos that Shogun sent me. Why did Yua have them? しかもこの画像が流出したのは事件の前日です。あなたの使ったPCにキャッシュが残ってました。ち、違う。I got those photos from some guy named Shogun that I'd never even met before that, that before that day. Excuse me. I didn't make them. They should still be in my download history, I know, and I can show that to you. Wait, where did she get these? How did she know they were still in my computer's cache. When she came to my room, she wasn't there long enough to search my computer. Was she trying to set me up? Was Yua behind this whole thing? Was she the one? Or was she one of the new gen killers trying to use me as a scapegoat to distract the police from the truth? This wasn't fair. Why me? Because I'm a creepy loser? Because I don't have any friends? <laughs> Yua just shook her head silently. What? The room next to room 37? The one I always used at At Cafe? She really did think she was some kind of detective. She just looked... Or she looked just the slightest bit sorry as she stared at me. For just a single second, she looked like the old Yua. She kept that expression on her face as she rustled through her bag again. And this time, she took out a sheet with printed text on it and offered it to me. I had an awful premonition. The logical part of my mind told me I shouldn't look. But I had to. If I didn't find some way to resist, they'd pin, they'd pin it on me. That's Everything I was? Did she steal all my private information? Was she a hacker? My heart pounded as I looked at the printout, but instead of my private information, it was just a chat log. Huh? It was a log of Nightheart and... Shogun. Yeah. That, that's it. That log. It's strange. Huh? Uh, what's strange, it was just a normal chat log. I remembered the conversation I had with Shogun. Uh... Yeah, where's our third character, Grim? Do they not? They do not. They most definitely do not. Oh! What is this? What was going on? そこにある。ナイトハルトは西条。発言時間は9月28日の午前3時だ。そして翌日、あなたはアットカフェに行ってます。西条 水曜日、木曜日。先週の月曜日は9月29日。将軍の発言時間と同じ日です。What? What was she talking about? ルーム37のPCのチャットログを調べさせてもらいました。そこから分かったことは。Yes. She paused for just a moment. Before looking right at me and delivering a cruel truth. Don't look at me. Huh? Don't look at me. Uh. How? 
How? That, that doesn't make any sense. But also the fact that Grim wasn't there in, the, in what she had printed out and two different days at completely different times. Interesting. Interesting stuff. Well, we are going to end it here, but I will mention this because this has been a, um, a thing that has come up in many visual novels that I've played so far on the channel. Perspective is key. And our main character here is not really uh, dependable. <laughs> he is delusional and a little messy. So if I've learned anything on my adventures through many visual novels here on the channel is that perspective is very important as to understanding what is actually going on. So who is talking me talking to and that uh, very late night, early morning, whatever the fuck. Was he actually talking to anybody? Does he actually have some sort of ability where he was talking to himself? But why would he send himself images and where would he get the images? He doesn't have a phone or any means of taking photos or even being able to recreate as far as we can tell. Interesting stuff. And also, just goes to show you, you just can't trust women. You can't trust 3D women, but 2D women, on the other hand, absolutely. Well, anyways, now that I'm going to get canceled, uh, we'll end the episode here. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I will see you guys in the next one for more craziness. Take it easy.